the, if the government shuts down, let's just be truthful. We're not going to miss it. It's already in, it's already over <laughs> overexposed anyway. Well, that's how the American people feel. The people that are affected are federal government employees, but the American people don't miss a beat in their jobs. That's the reality. Now we can we can talk about how it affects um, uh, uh, our ability to fund the government. We're not doing a good job in Washington right now. Yeah. I, for one, have drawn my red lines. I'm not voting for COVID anything. I'm not voting for for Biden's weaponized special counsels. I'm not voting for Ukraine. That was Georgia Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene making the almost coherent point that a federal government shutdown would mainly hurt federal government workers. Except Greene didn't seem to realize there are nearly three million federal workers across the country. Those federal workers start losing their paychecks in just four days when the government shuts down due to Greene's theatrics. And it won't surprise you to realize Greene can't even get her numbers right because there are thousands of people in Georgia who are applying for federally provided home mortgages to buy houses. They'll soon be shut out of that, too, and potentially homeless. So that's where the American people are. Yeah. They're fed up with it. Amid all the GOP chaos on Capitol Hill, one thing is absolutely clear. Nobody in the Republican Party has any actual plan to keep the government open. Here's South Carolina Congressman Ralph Norman laying it out pretty clear. Congressman, it's really striking to hear you say it's a 100% chance of going to a government shutdown <clears throat> now because we are just now in this country digging out of the hole from COVID and the, the hit that the economy took. But inflation is coming down. Unemployment is at historic lows. Why risk damaging the economy further with a shutdown? Why risk borrowing more money at $20,000 a second that's going to add to the $32 trillion debt? But you do agree uh, that a shutdown would also harm the economy, correct? Well, uh, it harmed the economy when the government shut the businesses down for a, a virus. It harmed the economy when children couldn't go to school and they took them out of school for the length of time they did. Okay, so apparently we're going to drive the U.S. economy into a ditch because Republicans are still butthurt about COVID lockdowns, even though the Office of Management and Budget points out that the communities most hurt by a shutdown are all in red states. So... Good luck explaining that one to your voters. And according to Freedom Caucus Congressman Andy Biggs, you should all be ashamed of yourselves because in a certain light, shutting down the whole federal government is actually not a shutdown at all. I wish I was joking, guys. We're going to have to shut down temporarily. You know, that's why it's a pause. And it's not really a shutdown because most of government, the vast majority of government keeps uh, keeps going. And you, and you basically say, we're going to have to have a pause Everybody's going to get their money back. It's not a shutdown. It's not a it's not a cut in spending. It's not a reduction in spending because everybody gets paid ultimately anyway. Except there's one problem with Biggs's so-called logic. Not everyone does get paid eventually. Meanwhile, businesses who depend on federal contracts will suffer permanent damage. A fact we know because it happens every single time Republicans shut down the government. Really think they'd have learned this by now. Every single time Republicans shut down the government, voters have punished them at the next election. Now, some of the smarter Republican lawmakers are starting to recognize this, and they're fighting for a bill to short-term fund the government until they can agree. But Donald Trump really does not want that, so you can guess where this is all going to end. But there is one Republican saying something strange, the truth. Here's retiring Senator Mitt Romney explaining exactly what Republicans don't want you to know about their economic suicide plan. President Trump was president. You didn't hear anything from we Republicans yeah. about how we were spending too much and trillion yeah. dollar deficits. You know, quiet as little lambs. Now President Biden is president. Oh, we're going to shut down government if we don't rein in spending. Well, we do need to cut back on spending, but, but you know, a little less hypocrisy would be a good thing. Unfortunately for Mitt, Republicans have pretty much given up on governing. The House returned from the weekend break on Monday with no plan in place even to vote on a short-term bill, part because the far right has threatened to throw Kevin McCarthy out of his job if he so much as tries. This isn't the first, second, or even third time the GOP's brought our nation to the economic brink, but it should be the last. Next year, voters have the chance to elect a government that will actually fulfill the basic responsibility of governing. That's up to you. Republicans are more than happy to use this fake crisis to complain about how government is broken. But the truth is, 
Government is fine. It's the Republicans who are broken. And it isn't even clear if Kevin McCarthy's still their actual leader. That spells even more chaos in the days ahead. Get in the way of the American people and their paychecks, and you're asking for a nuclear political reckoning in 2024. Republicans couldn't stop themselves from holding our economy hostage. Now it's up to voters to make sure they don't have a job next year. And if you think that was a lot, check out this video. So much food and water stored down there to feed the whole United States for about 10 years. And as always, leave a comment below so you can let me know what I should cover next.